the practice of reflection. We're talking about different approaches, different efficient approaches to reflection. And it does beg the question, why be a reflective practitioner at all? Why engage in all these processes, which do take up some time um, uh, um, uh, away from uh, our teaching in the classroom? Well, quite simply, reflective practice enables professional development. Um, professional development, which is meaningful and keyed into um, our direct experiences. And in this sense, therefore, reflective practice helps us uh, develop ourselves in terms of um, a new notion of the 21st century, which is about uh, professions being part of a knowledge economy where the skills and the knowledge and the experiences we have are, uh, are more uh, substantial but at the same time um, less tangible uh, than, the, the ex uh, than the things that we've had in the past. And therefore undertaking professional development has become and is increasingly becoming uh, a, a prime requisite for teachers uh, as professionals because we need to show as teachers that we are highly skilled and highly proficient. And it's important to be a reflective practitioner because as a very simple process it enables us to ensure the quality of what we're doing um, we can focus on why things are going wrong and why they're going wrong and this gives us a focus for improvement and at the same time we can focus on why things are going well and how we can not only maintain uh, that good work but also develop that expertise or in other words it enables us to achieve what we would call good practice The thing about reflection is it does require a level of systematic thinking, very logical uh, and detailed thinking, but at the same time requires the individual uh, in um, initiative and, and in, in a way soft thinking around uh, issues and attitudes and feelings. And these two things within um, a framework with an outcome of action leads to a level of criticality uh, within the profession. So the reason why we reflect is not just to reflect on what went well and what went wrong, but actually to look at the whys and the hows of these questions and to begin to really think about um, these things within a, a broader context and that broader context is about quality and about improvement. And so the reflective practitioner um, in order to develop skills for practice really need to uh, develop uh, their self-awareness, their role as a professional, their role as a colleague and their role as an individual within a team, a group setting. And uh, the reflective practitioner needs to be very creative in terms of um, their interpretation of experience and the development of solutions to complex problems, uh, issues that we're facing. And therefore, a good outcome of being a reflective practitioner is a developing strong set of skills for problem solving and critical thinking. Reflective practice is a way to uh, develop skills for synthesis of knowledge and evaluation of knowledge. As practitioners in the classroom, we're always acquiring uh, knowledge from the experiences that we have. We're learning new things all the time. And um, in terms of reflective practice, using higher levels of Bloom's thinking, we can 
develop skills and develop abilities uh, in terms of judging and evaluating and being creative uh, around what we do. And in this sense, we can develop high degrees of ability for uh, planning and, and uh, actioning uh, ideas that we may have. And this can help become a very effective and efficient teacher in the classroom. And in terms of career progression, can very much help an individual develop skills which can lead to um, management positions.